Okay, so let me know if you're not able to see the PowerPoint slides uh, on the screen. So this is just a few slides that I show previously because in the first uh, session, uh, the video do not show all these slides, right? So these are the assessment for this module. And these are the chapter cover throughout this module. And these are the textbook that we're going to use throughout this module, all right? And these are the things that we discuss for today for chapter one, fundamental concepts. So we talk about history. We talk about, um, later we're going to look at uh, general steps. steps huh? Okay. All right. Now also we look at a few area, a few problems that we can use FEM to solve, structure, heat, fluid, mass, electromagnetic. And then the word called discrete, discrete means we break the structure into small pieces. In software, later on, we use the word mesh, M-A-M-E-S-H, -E mesh. Right? And then some history started in the uh, 1940s right, by this guy. So early, everything starts with a one-dimensional analysis and then move on. Yeah? So 1960s start with a small analysis on a strain, deflection, and then uh, material non-linearities, uh, buckling problems, and so on. Okay, and then the reason why we study, uh, why we use a matrix method, because of these three reasons. Again, um, just a reminder, uh, go to um, Moodle to download Appendix A. Now, for uh, because one of you not able to access Moodle, um, I'm going to upload the material in uh, Microsoft Team today, later on after the class, so you can go and download there. But I think uh, this Wednesday onwards, you're going to upload everything on Moodle. Okay. Yeah, this is uh, how Appendix A look like when you download. So I think this one have a uh, six to eight pages. Go through just to refresh what is matrix. Um, and for this module, we're going to look at F matrix or force matrix forces displacement. Both use the curly uh, curly column, right? A curly bracket, right? Force and displacement. These are the terms that you learned this morning. And then another type of uh, mat uh, matrix is you use a square bracket. That one particular special for stiffness, right? Material stiffness. We have K and uh, small K and uh, big K, right? And we learn the word uh, local and global. So small, small alphabet refer to local. Let me run it out. This means the word local. If you see the capital, either F or K, it refer to global. We, we, will, we will come into more detail what is local, what is global. But uh, at this moment, uh, what is important is that you know that uh, how we write uh, the term in the matrix format. Okay, then the first equation that we learned this morning is F equal to K times D. F represent force, K represent stiffness matrix, which is what you see on the screen here. Stiffness matrix, D is the displacement, right? So you have F, K and D here. So uh, this is the general matrix on the left. This is a more detailed or expanded matrix. So this F, if you expand this one in a more detailed uh, presentation, you will look at F1X, F1Y, and so on. If you expand the stiffness matrix, you will see K11, 12 until the last K that you have in the system. D, displacement here, we're going to look at 
the term in U, V, W term. Okay, U1, V1, W1, and so on. Okay, so uh, so far um, there's no complex uh, mathematics model so far. Um, we, we only look at matrix. What is matrix? Okay. Now uh, we come back to a tutorial question. If you look at a tutorial question, it will be under question number eight. It talk about the method that we use in FEM, uh, finite element methods. We have three methods we're going to use. So the first one is called direct method. The second one is called variation method. The third one is weighted method. Okay. So all these you can, uh, uh, you will go one by one after this. So in principle, there are three methods that we use for FM. The first one is direct method, which is the word that you, you learned in the uh, previous module, the word equilibrium, which is all the force equal to zero, or all the momentum or moment equal to zero, and so on. So if everything in equilibrium, then all the all everything the parameter inside the system will be equal to zero. So this is a direct method. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Variation. Then we're going to use the virtual work principle, virtual work principle. So this one uh, also there's an appendix for this method. Uh, weighted residuals. Then uh, we have more uh, treatment in mathematics uh, steps for this one, okay? So, uh, at least you have some idea what's, what's, what, what are the main uh, method that we're gonna use uh, for FEM, okay? Because later on, when we use the software, uh, everything will, will come into sense. Huh? You, you make sense of why, why a certain button is inside the, the software, okay? Now we look at the first method. What is direct method? So direct method is the simplest that you will see or use in the software. Um, however, it's only limited to 1D problems. So direct method only limited to 1D problems. So like spring, bars, truss, and beam, only 1D means uh, one directional uh, problems. Um, and the equation that we learned this morning, F equal to KD. So for example, you have a, a steel bar. Uh, under Hooke's law, you have F equal to KX, right? But in this module, we're going to use F equal to K equal to T. Oh, sorry. The symbol uh, is not a uh, square bracket. For force is a curly bracket. For stiffness is a square bracket. For displacement is a curly bracket. Huh? Uh, it's a curly, yeah, curly bracket. So again, for matrix in this module, we have two types of uh, shape. So be careful when you when you write it during your test or in your assignment or in your final exam. So each type of uh, shape will, will mean something. So this morning, what you learn is that be careful uh, when you use the either curly or bracket. Bracket always for the uh, K, for the stiffness. And then the rest we use curly, right? So under direct method, uh, we have two approach. So in the equation, you have three unknown, force, stiffness matrix, uh, stiffness, and also the displacement. So the first approach, we're going to solve for the force first, meaning we focus on the force component. Uh, the keyword here is we look at the internal force, the first approach. Huh? So under the first method, we call it direct method. So we have two way of, of solving or two way uh, when we use this method. So one, uh, we start with the left component with this we solve all the force e equal to zero so we use the focus on the force component on the left and then we continue with the calculation second way is that we focus on the um, 
on the right component, meaning we can start with uh, solving the K or we can start solving the displacement. So under direct method, you start with the equation F equal to KD. Then you can start either from the left, solve the force component first, or you start on the right hand side uh, of the equation. You can start with the K or you can start with the displacement. It depends on the problem that you have or the problem statement that you have in the question. So sometimes it's easy for you to start with the force. Sometimes it's easy to start with the K with its stiffness of the material. Sometimes it's very direct um, um, when you have the displacement. Okay, so these are the approach. Uh, later you'll see in chapter two, we will use this uh, approach many, many times. Okay. All right. So of course, uh, later on for chapter two, just a uh, 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 head up for chapter two. We will start with the K and D to solve our problems. Variation methods are uh, uh, very useful when we have a two D or three D problems. Meaning your object going to move in x, y direction and z direction sometimes. Okay, meaning in your in your equation, f equal to k d, put in the mat, uh, matrix uh, format, k bracket and the d with the curly bracket. It means when you come with the 3D problems, your d will going to have u, V and W uh, movement, okay, in here, okay. So then you'll use variation methods, okay. And um, another term that you learn uh, for chapter one is called functional. The word functional or textbook uh, word that they use by the author. Uh, functional means equation, equation. So uh, if you back to mathematics concept equation, you have linear equation, meaning if you plot X, Y graph, you will have a straight line, Y equal to MX plus C, okay? Second type of equation, you have quadratic, which is you have a curve form like that, on x, y also, where your equation will look like ax squared plus bx plus c. Make sense, right? So, and then a polynomial, where your equation will more than the, the end here will be more than two, so ax, power three plus something, okay? So um, functional, the word functional, or on the slides, when you, every time you see the word functional, it means uh, equation, right? Okay, the third, the third method is weighted residual method. Um, we're gonna use a differential equation. So if this word, uh, you're not familiar, you need to go, go back to your advanced mathematics. Uh, go and find under chapter uh, differential equation, all right? Uh, or under calculus, go to a calculus textbook, uh, look under uh, differential equation, all right? All right, um, we have a quick one. Um, I think uh, we have a quick one. So for chapter one, it gives you some idea uh, what is FEM. So we're going to have seven steps uh, when we try to solve the uh, FEM method. We're going to follow these seven steps throughout this module, right? Uh, even when you use a software, um, you will go through these seven steps, okay? So um, if you talk about FEM, uh, we're going to go through seven steps. 
first one is going to choose the element types. First step, first step, you look at the problems, look at the question that you're given to you. Um, then the first step is that you identify the element types. First step, identify the element types. So on your tutorial question, it will fall under question nine. Uh, there's a diagram given there. Okay, so there are uh, a few types of uh, element. The first one is more uh, the the simplest one, where you have a two D bar, a uh, one D or two D bar. So um, let's say you have only have a structure. You have a point one and point two. So um, the first type of element is called simple nodded, simple nodded uh, element. Okay, the first type. Uh, don't worry, uh, just just uh, look at the screen because later on the information will be available to you. All right, the first element will be a simple bar shape, node one, node two. Second one will be uh, more than two node, meaning uh, three node, three point. Uh, this one is six point, and then uh, this one is a four point with uh, uh, some different coordinate, and then uh, this one also. So triangular and quadrilaterals, quadrilaterals, right? So the first type, simple, only two not two point. Second type is more a bit more complex, more than two point. We have three, four, five, and so on. And then uh, okay, the first two type is on four under um, two not. We can call it as one D. Uh, then this one is uh, two-dimensional, more than three points. We have a shape already, and then the third one is uh, 3D, three-dimensional problems. Means uh, one of it will go in. Then you will look at uh, three three axes, x, y, and z. Okay, the first two you only look at the first one. You only look at x and y. Second one also x, y, 2D problems. Then the third one is uh, ABC, uh, sorry, X, Y, and Z, three dimension problems. So you have all these shapes, huh? tetrahedros, hexahedros, and illegal, in regular shape, right? So the first one, the first steps in uh, FEM, choose the element inside the problem, whether it is the first one, this one, second one, or the third one. So just give you a, a hint for your task and exam. Uh, if you need to do calculation, it will be four under this one and this one. If you need to do calculation, most of the time will be this type and this type. And we come to software and this analysis will go to 3D. All right, go to 3D. We use uh, 3D form. First one, first steps, uh, choose element types. And then in the software, uh, there's one more category called symmetry cases, where if you cut across a 3D model, uh, if the cross section is the same, then we can use a symmetrical uh, approach. Means uh, we, can, we can simplify our model in Maybe uh, for 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 the one on the on the screen here, on the left right hand side, we can only simulate uh point one two three four rather than uh, simulate the the overall three uh, D object. Okay, so there are four element types. Um, you can go through the slides later on. Okay, the first type is X Y two uh, D problems with two not. Second type is uh, 2D with more than two node. The third type is 3D dimensional, X, Y, and Z. Uh, then you have a 3D body. The fourth type is the symmetrical body, right? Cylindrical body. Okay. So we clear with the step one, right? Um, first select uh, element types. Second one, choose the equation displacement equation or function, right? Just now we also mentioned, you see the word function, it means uh, equation. So displacement equation. 
So again, we have quadratic, uh, linear, and polynomial. Okay, and all these equations you already learned in the stress analysis uh, one and two. So we just call back all the equation, right? This module is uh, application what you learned in uh, the previous module. Okay. Um, step number one, um, select the element. Second one, uh, call out the relevant equation for that particular question. For example, if you have a spring problems or bar problem, you call out F equal to KX, for example, then you write into a matrix form. Oh, sorry. Metric form F equal to bracket K with a square and then a curly with a D and then you put in into a matrix form. OK, so I'll, I'll show you the steps later on I'll be more detail in chapter two. Right. So in this morning, there's only one only one equation that you need to memorize F equal to K D matrix F equal to matrix K with a stiffness times the displacement matrix. This is the only equation that you need to uh, memorize uh, this morning. Okay. The third step is to apply the displacement uh, uh, equation. So for example, uh, we look at strain displacement. What is strain? If you learn in stress analysis, strain is this symbol. Stress is this symbol. We have tensile stress, uh, compression stress, and all this. Okay, stress equal to force divided by area. Strain equal to elongation or change of length divided by original length. Okay. All right. So in one D deformation, meaning if you have a bar with a tensile force, for example. Then your strain will be the change of uh, elongation. You write in mathematics, du over dx, it means the change in x direction. Again, x direction is called u. Just now, x, y, and z, All right? So all the movement to the uh, long x-axis, we name it as u. All the movement to y, we name it as v. All the movement to z, we name it as w. So if we, our deformation only happen in x-axis, then we write uh, strain equal to du over dx. This is a, a differential equation. Uh, so, so du over dx is just means that you here again for this module don't confuse with the physics so in 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 other module you represent speed but especially when it comes to fluid dynamics so for this uh, final element methods topic uh, you represent displacement in the x direction and for stress uh, we use the uh, uh, hook's law modulus young equal to um, stress divided by strain. Okay, you can either memorize this form or this form. All right. So the third step is call back. What is the definition of strain? What is the definition of stress? All right. The third steps. The fourth one is to put everything in the matrix format. Okay. Um, we will look into this later on. Huh? So the fourth step is to put everything in the matrix format. So we've already downloaded the, 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 the tutorial uh, paper. It will be on the page number four. Uh, you just fill in the blanks there. Okay. So step number four is to put everything in a matrix format. Um, okay. So we we'll look into this all this uh, method later on. Um, there's an appendix E I attach in the Moodle. Appendix E on the virtual works. What is virtual work? You can go and read uh, about virtual works. Huh? Okay, step number five. We're going to put everything um, with the boundary condition. Okay. Uh, 
uh, what is boundary condition BC? What is boundary condition? If you learned in a previous uh, um, chapter or module. So boundary condition, we're going to look at location and the constraint. For example, if you have a structure inside a wall, so point number one and point number two. So point number one, you don't have displacement. So um, if you have something inside the wall, um, displacement, let's say this is the X direction. This is Y direction. So displacement in point one, point one X will be zero. This is a bounding condition. And displacement in point number two, you need to define. There's a value here. Okay, we do not know. And boundary condition also is the distance. So for example, uh, this one is at, uh, for example, x equal to zero, if you measure from point one, and this is the L, so x, num x, x2 will be L, for example, or this uh, boundary condition. Then you substitute inside the equation. So this is step number five. Step number five will be focused on boundary condition. Uh, any constraint that you have on the body or, or any force apply, any external force apply, then you, you substitute inside the equation, right? So in the, in the stress analysis, uh, you learn about distributed uh, force and all this, okay? So we will look into more detail in the following chapter, right? Currently, it's just a general idea what is happening in the FEM. Okay. Uh, at the end, we still arrive at this uh, equation that uh, we memorized this morning, F equal to K times D, so uh, in matrix form. So every time you see the curly bracket or the square bracket, um, then it means that it's in the matrix format. Okay. Uh, it followed by step number six, we solve the uh, dis dis displacement, uh, the unknown inside the equation, right? So this is the expanded format from the equation that we learned uh, this morning. We have the F, K, and D. Again, F, we use the curly form. K, we use the square bracket. Displacement, we use the curly format and put in the mathematics uh, operation uh, symbol. So we have F equal to K times D. So you expand into uh, a small, small details like F1X, FY1, uh, 1Y, and so on, okay? Including the K and uh, U, all right? Yeah. So in the exam, if you write F equal to K U, if you write something like that, this is the wrong answer. This is the wrong answer. If you, in the exam, if you write the wrong denotation, it means that you don't understand uh, the basic concept uh, in a mathematic form. So don't do this uh, in, when it comes to exam uh, or test. So this is a general uh, symbol that we use uh, throughout this module. F, capital F, equal to K, capital K, and a small d to represent. This is a displacement, stiffness, and force. Okay. A reminder, don't confuse between the expanded. This is the expand format. This is a general equation, uh, expanded equation. So uh, don't confuse between these two. Huh? Okay. Um, this is the unknown that we're going to solve in step number six. Okay all this displacement going to solve. Um, and uh, how to use a matrix or how to solve simultaneous linear equation uh, also will be included in uh, Appendix B uh, that I upload in Moodle. Uh, don't worry later, we're going to upload all this material in the Microsoft team. Uh, you can find in the folder later on. Okay, I'm going to upload this one for this week only, all right? Okay, number last step is just to solve the strain and stress. Strain and stress inside the system. 
So we have all these uh, general steps. Uh. Uh, the last step is just interpret the results. So results, we come up with a decision. Means what you're going to do with the numbers. For example, is it the numbers? If it is the force will uh, will fail the structure, or what is the for example what is the diameter or what is the area minimum area that we need so that um, the structure will pass the loading. This is a decision, and the result you will see in the graph form or in in the software you will see all the colors. On the structure, you will see all the red colors here, blue color here, and also you can uh, ask the software to to represent the the force and displacement according to the location. Okay, so these are the general steps uh, involved in uh, FEM. So again, just to refresh very quickly. Step number one: choose the types, element types. Step number two: choose the function, the equation. Right. First one, choose the element type. Second one, recall the function, the equation. The third one, recall equation for stress and strain. The fourth one, put everything in a matrix form. Solve for the K component, the, the stiffness component. Right. Again, our matrix have three components, right? F, K, and D. I'm going to repeat this one many, many times. You have F, K, and D. So we solve for the K, put everything in this form, solve for K, then we solve for the D, displacement, and then we solve for the unknown. So, uh, okay, then put in the boundary condition, then solve for the unknown. Okay. Solve the simultaneous and then find for the stress and strain inside the question, interpret the results. So these are the steps the, that we use in FEM. Okay. And these are the advantages the, of using uh, finite element methods. So this one you can uh, read in my slides. We have uh, structural problems and non structurals. Structurals, you will look at stress. Buckling means, uh, buckling, uh, just a refresh. Uh, if you have a bar and you and you press on the top, this bar is going to deform. This bar is going to deform under the stress. This behavior from position A to position B is called buckling. Okay. You push from one side and then you deform, happen like that. We call buckling. Vibration, impact, non-structurals is on the thermal, uh, float flow, and uh, electromagnetics. So we have two types of uh, structural problems. Okay. So later on in the software or ANSYS, you can choose whether you want to go for structurals or non-structurals uh, analysis. Okay. So, yeah. So this one is uh, example. On the structural problems, we break uh, the structure into a few points and so on. And this is the uh, meshing, the discretization, the definition uh, in your tutorial, question number two, discretization, we break into small uh, square there and so on. This is another one with a different kind of uh, meshing, different type of uh, less solution in your solution. Uh, heat, uh, this one example is uh, um, the thermal conduction in the in our earth break into uh, small pieces. Uh, advantages uh, using FEM, so on you can read from the slides, right? So we can model it, we can uh, apply the loading, we can uh, we can change the material inside the software. Uh, we can change the boundary condition to simulate what happened under certain uh, condition. We can change the size of the small element that break down, right? Uh, and so on. The, all this you can uh, uh, read from my slides. Huh? 
and then we can uh, change the equation that we use to simulate. Uh, we can include the dynamics uh, behavior, uh, and also we can look at uh, nonlinear behavior. So these are the, all the example on the screen here. This one is the caliper. When you run the simulation, you'll see the changes of colors. Uh, this is a nonlinear studies. Uh, Vormosis is a nonlinear. So Vormesis is the term that we use every time we study about nonlinear. Um, this one is the, uh, the behavior on the turbine. Also, the cracking happened. Okay, and so on. All this example. And uh, example of computer products. The first one is uh, Autodesk or AutoCAD. Uh, we have Nastran, CFD, uh, and so on. All this you'll see. But for example, for this module, we're going to use ANSYS. Um, uh, this one, Abacus Simulia. This one under SolidWorks uh, company. Um, this one, Cos Cos Cosmos. Um, and uh, so on. Huh? Uh, LS DYNA was bought uh, by uh, ANSYS, so you can see all these function inside the latest ANSYS uh, products. Okay. Um, Nasran, right, and Pro E or Pro Mechanical. So when you go to work after this, uh, when you graduate from this program, um, some of the company they look at the skill in Nasran, skill in uh, uh, ANSYS, uh, SolidWorks, uh, or Abacus, or even Autodesk. Okay, but uh, again, the principle used in all this software is the same. Okay, so if you if you know how to use ANSYS, it's quite uh, powerful. Uh, you mentioned in your in your uh, CV, then you are good to go. Okay. So let me stop the recording.